It's that time a week once again, my fellow Cheebits. It's ReZero Day. The new episode is here. And I gotta tell you, the wait since last week's episode to have this episode, it has been hell. Because I have been wanting this next episode so bad. So bad. Like, I am addicted to this series because I want to know what's going to happen. And as I have said in my videos, that I really, really wish that either the web novel series or the light novels were translated. Because if they were, oh, if they were, I would definitely be reading ahead right now. But sadly, there is nothing. And the wait for this series after last week's fantastic episode, it has been absolute hell. And I'm glad to have the new episode here. But sadly, we gotta wait for next week, for the next episode, so the hell begins once again. So, this episode, definitely not on the same level as psychological trauma, like as we saw in last week's episode with, you know, the cruelty of what happened to Rim and how being flexible, or how flexible she really is, but this episode was good in its own way for different reasons. And for that, it mainly came down to politics and discussions, negotiations between these higher people, these nobles, the royalty and stuff, the next selection for the, the ruler of the capital or the kingdom. We get to see politics throughout the entirety of this episode. And it's just something you would not expect to see. Because after last week's episode and how much hell... Subaru went through, and how much hell Rim went through, you just, you don't expect something like this, the way this episode was done, and it's actually the logical thing that would happen in everyday life, and it, which is one of the main reasons why I love Spice and Wolf so much, because some of the, you know, politics that were used in this episode reminded me a lot of Spice and Wolf, it really did, like for instance the uh, Sun Coin arc, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it reminds me a lot of that, and then other arcs before that, so this episode hit my personal taste rather correctly. Because I was happy to see just politics throughout the episode. So what was necessarily going on? So after the events of last week's episode, we know Subaru, he got this murderous intent in his eyes. He, he just wanted to murder every bastard that did him wrong. He just wants to kill everyone. That, that's kind of how Subaru was acting at the end of last week's episode. And there is something I need to talk about, which I actually forgot to mention in that video. And many of you, quite a bit of you, were asking about my thoughts on that scene. And I, honestly, I completely let it slip my mind. I, I just, I, there was just so much to talk about, it slipped my mind. So I want to mention something from last week's episode that I didn't talk about. And that would be the sin of pride. For instance, how Subaru, apparently he has pride. And the way it was hinted at, we know there was sloth being mentioned and stuff like that. So there is a possibility that something to do with the seven deadly sins are a part of the series. For instance, you know, Subaru, he's the sin of pride. And when we had the sloth in last week's episode. So with these different references, and we know that, you know, the seven deadly sins isn't something entirely new when it comes to manga, anime, and light novels. I'm willing to bet that whatever's going on here, when it comes to the witch following the, the actual jealous witch, I believe there's probably, like, the Seven Deadly Sins underneath her. Probably individual people that are underneath her with, like, different titles. Like, you know, Sloth, Greed, Pride, Wrath, you get my point, Envy. And I, I, can f I feel like each individual disciple, maybe like the higher-ups, probably are, you know, one of these, of the Seven Deadly Sins. And that's probably why he asked, is he Pride? Are you Pride? Because of the way you're acting. But then he started calling him Sloth. So I feel like that's what was going on there, just to give you my clarification and my thoughts on that scene. Now, talking about the ending inclusion of last week's episode, and then carrying it over into this episode, Subaru, after all he went through, he is at that point to where he's at madness, but he just wants revenge. He's a man that straight up just wants to murder a person. He just wants to kill someone after what happened to him. And I guess it is warranted. I mean, this man has been through so much hell already, I could see why he would want to kill someone. And after what he witnessed last week, which was probably one of the most brutal things he's seen so far, I could see why he'd be like he is. So, it carries us over into the mansion, the place he's been staying at with one of the actual next uh, royal candidates, and he has a conversation, he's like, hey, the witch's cult is going to be attacking the domain to where Amelia is, and then, you know, killing innocent civilians. I need your help, 
I need you to send a force or anything for you can help because I don't want nobody to die. I don't want these innocent civilians to die. And Subaru is just pleading for help at the beginning of the episode. He's like, please, please help me. I mean, you can see the rage in his eyes, how angry he is, the way he carries himself. And it's to be expected. I mean, he just had to go for experience like last week's episode. And of course, you'd still have this anger in him. And we've already seen that he's very mentally unstable. And we get to see once again how one of our characters mentions how much madness he currently has in him, how he's just so mad and how angry is and how he believes what he's talking about is actually the truth and not a lie which we know he's telling the truth but not many people would believe him so talking about it in detail Subaru he's just pleading for help he's like please help me and as the conversation carries on eventually it turns into Paul and it's like what do I get out of helping you like why would I help someone that's a part of the royal selection like why would I help someone else my rival a person I'm going up against why would I help them how does it benefit me in any way and and to be real it makes a lot of sense i mean that's how politics are done or any type of negotiation when it comes to this like why want to help someone else out when i don't benefit from it? now obviously to be a kind person you would just help them out regardless but in that type of age to where there's royal selection and all that i mean you're battling for power and there's constantly like assassinations and crazy shit going on behind the scenes stuff like that happens and you need to get something out of it like some form of equal exchange and she was like what can you offer me what can you offer me for equal exchange if i was to help you out and eventually the entire negotiation went south and subaru he he got really pissed off it was just really fucked up how many of the royal candidates were just asking for subaru for something of equal exchange and they just didn't give a shit about anything else at all they didn't care that innocent lives were actually in the, you know in jeopardy that were about to die it made me absolutely sick when i saw these individual characters like you know the one with the green hair and all that just seeing how she reacted in this episode and subaru was like are you just gonna let these people die an entire village die you're not gonna help anyone when you have the power and, and he's like I, I you're disgusting me you're not gonna help the weak and i agree with subaru i mean subaru has been an ass he has a lot of issues with his personality which i have discussed and it adds character on what he's going through right now and all of this madness and this anger and everything he feels right now it is character development to show us that he is not perfect and that he is changing he is evolving he's evolving into something different and i love the direction his character is going and i have to admit i'm on subaru's side in this i mean i understand when it comes to politics and negotiations there needs to be something of value for them to even want to initiate and help the other party out and i can understand that side i understand the royal candidate sides of why they wouldn't want to help out amelia but I, however, am not for them just turning a blind eye to innocent people getting killed and, you know, just seeing innocent villagers getting slaughtered and all that. And, and she was bringing up logical points. Like, why would I want this person to be the next royal candidate or, like, the, the ruler of the kingdom if she can't even guard her own domain? Like, why, why would I want to, you know, have this person rule over me if she can't even defend her people already she has? And that that actually makes a lot of good points. That That's a very good point when it comes to that. I mean, why would you be a good ruler if you can't even defend your own people. But then we do know something else is going on here, especially with, you know, the witch's cult. We know Subaru, he's in deep with something, something very bad, because we know he's connected to the Jealous Witch in some way. So there's probably a whole lot more going on here, and I just feel so bad. I mean, Subaru's in such a bad spot right now, because he can't really explain why he knows this information, which that actually was brought up in this episode, which I'm glad was. It gives us much needed clarification that Subaru can give answers to people about stuff that maybe happens in the future but he obviously can't talk about you know why he knows these things i like that i just like seeing him say the witch's cult is going to be attacking in like a couple of days you need to send a force you need to send an army and then you know like they're asking well how do you know this like how do you know these details how do you know that the witch's cult is going to be attacking unless you're a part of the cult and as we know if normal people like for instance like rim was to look at subaru they will know that he has the masma of the witch the jealous witch all around him like the smell of it coming off his body and i liked how rim lied for subaru I actually took his side even though she doesn't understand everything it doesn't seem like she completely believes what subaru is saying she at the very least took his side and tried to help him out when she said like she never sensed anything to do with like how he's affiliated maybe with the witch's cult even though we know that Rim has asked him once before, like, you smell just like the witch. You have this smell coming off you. And I, I just love how Rim took his side. Once again, concreting her as one of the best girls of the series. Probably, yeah, my, my favorite female character of Rezero. She is definitely my favorite. It's going to be hard for any character, really, to beat her after last week's episode of what she did for Subaru. That was some heart-touching shit. And then this right here, 
this scene of how she backed him even though she didn't understand completely i have a lot more respect for her after that and then another thing too that was going on is the other royal cannons what they were doing like we had some really scumbag interactions going on especially with getting to see the one that was like oh i want you to lick my foot that i kind of understand where she was coming from she was testing subaru to see exactly what type of character he is like what his character is like and i see why she was disgusted and why she actually was uh, why she got pissed off and kicked him because i mean he was willing to sink as low as that to actually lick another person's foot just for he can actually save someone else or you know actually help out a person he cares about and it's kind of like He's shitting on Amelia's goodwill for actually doing something like that, and that's kind of why I believe she was pissed. But even then, though, at the end of the day, I still don't like her attitude and the way she reacted. But out of all the other candidates, though, I think she was probably one of the best. Definitely one of the best natured. Even though she seemed to have a very shitty personality in some way, it seemed like she was one of the better royal candidates out of all the others. Because you have one that's turning a blind eye to thousands of civilians about to get murdered. You have one that's like, I need you to lick my foot and to see what type of character you are before I can make my decision. Because if you wouldn't have, most likely she would have agreed to help him out. I'm willing to bet. And maybe she might have turned a blind eye and said, fuck you too. But that... That, that's left to be, you know, debated. I mean, we don't know. Subaru most likely will die once again. We might see him try a different approach with these royal candidates because there was one thing that was said in this episode that stands out as a possibility for another reset. And that is that Subaru had no idea what he was walking into. He's, poor, uh, like, horrible at negotiations, which was pointed out multiple times. He did not know how to negotiate at all. And one of the big things I learned when I actually was reading Spice and Wolf was that you should know what the person, the other party wants before you even walk in to some form of exchange a trade or anything you should know what the other party wants and try at the very least to get them to where you are at an advantage instead of them at an advantage and you at a disadvantage and Subaru he was at a disadvantage throughout the entirety of this episode because throughout the entirety of all these royal candidates lives they have been dealing with politics and stuff like the economics negotiations trading they've dealt with this probably majority of their life and they know how to deal with this type of world Subaru he's just an ordinary guy I mean he got sucked into this world he's constantly had to die now I mean he knows how kind of how to deal with you know dying constantly I mean he He's kind of a little bit broken, but I mean, he knows kind of how to deal with that. But when it comes to negotiations, politics and stuff, this is a man that knows jack shit. It's like throwing a middle schooler into a middle of like people at like the White House trying to do politics and stuff. It's just, it's not going to happen. He, he's not going to have any experience at all. So he walked into all these negotiations, not even knowing what to do or how to kind of negotiate at all. And I feel like this is a learning experience for him, for his failure in this episode which it's very apparent he's going to die especially with how the end of the episode was holy shit he's dead as fuck but if he does die he can approach these you know conversations once again and he could go at a different angle he can know kind of what they want and what they're seeking and i believe he'll probably change a lot of his approaches i i believe he might go at the one royal candidate that wants her foot licked, he might say, no, I'm, I refuse to do that, and he'll probably actually say, like, you know, something else on the lines, and maybe she might like him, or when he goes to the one, the girl that has, like, a giant army with her, like a Neko army, he'll probably talk with her, and he'll be the one dangling the information in front of her that she seeks, and he won't completely give it out, and she'll give Subaru more in exchange. I could see something like that happening. Now, getting off of all of that, let's just talk about the ending part of the episode, and that is the stuff that really just threw me for a loop. So, Subaru, he's traveling with a big band of merchants. And once again, more Spice and Wolf vibes. Like, I fucking love that. I love that shit. So, Subaru's traveling with a bunch of traveling merchants, and he's going to be going to the town to save the innocent civilians and get them out of there before the witch's cult attacks and kills everyone. And he does have a little bit of time to save them. But something happens in this episode, which I'm just trying to ask, like, what the fuck is going on? So, there's two things that were very off with this. And for one... You had it to where there was this monster that was apparently, like, invisible, like, very dark or invisible, just traveling near the traveling merchants, and it devoured, what I'm assuming, it devoured a merchant's cart and the merchant, and nobody realized the merchant was gone. Like, for instance, he acted like he didn't even exist, because the guy that was right beside Subaru, he was like, there was no one ever traveling right beside you to the right. Like, there, there was no one ever over there. What are you talking about? Even though we, as the viewer, we saw it, we know a person was there, but then the man's acting like he never existed, and you're like, 
what the fuck is going on? Is Subaru just going so far mentally insane? Is he seeing things? Or is something else happening? And you see this giant creature pop up, and when Subaru puts up his phone, he sees a giant eyeball staring at him. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's some form of big-ass fucking beast that most likely is going to kill him, eat him, and eat everyone there, and probably reset everything. So, I'm kind of curious, what is going on with that? So, he doesn't just have to deal with the witch's cult, now he has to deal with some form of beast that will eat him if he tries to get there early. Holy shit, the world is out to get Subaru. I mean, this poor man cannot catch a break. I mean, if it's not his head getting lopped off, to him getting crushed, to him fucking freezing to death, to seeing a girl he actually starting to care about die in front of him with a mangled body. I mean, he's seen so much shit, and now this man has to deal with this. Like, oh my god. The, the writer of this series straight up likes seeing Subaru suffer. I, I really think he does. Kind of sadistic, if you ask me. We didn't get to see the crazy madman from last week's episode. Oh yeah, speaking about that a couple of cheebits mentioned this in the comments below and also mentioned it on twitter and i'm gonna just say holy shit about this so apparently the voice actor of beetle Juice, I'm just gonna call him fucking Beetlejuice because that's what many of you were nicknaming i'm gonna call him Beetlejuice. so that man Beetlejuice, he his voice actor is the voice actor of kirito I i'm not even joking yes no shit kirito from sword art online that voice actor that voice actor voices Beetlejuice in ReZero. I I'm not even shitting you. I'm like, what? Like, this man straight up, this guy, this voice I hear from Kirito, like, all the time for other anime, he can voice a crazy man? What? So, I, I just... Props. Props to the voice acting. That voice acting, damn. I, I did not think the voice actor Kirito had it in him to do crazy. That, that needs some mad props. That voice actor, 10 out of 10 right there. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you all feel about this week's episode of ReZero? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or nights wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.